Hey guys, Scott here, and today we are checking out our new weight puzzle for escape rooms. Basic idea here is that, as you can see, we have a scale. Uh, we have a couple items that we're going to be using to test the scale. We have our prop controller, and we have four lights that are hooked to the prop controller to indicate different stages of the puzzle. Essentially what we want the players to do is match a weight that we've pre-programmed into the scale using items that we've placed in the room. Using the configurations of the controller, we can set this parameter however we like. We'll go through how you do that in a little bit, but let's just demo how this works uh, now. So we'll go ahead and power up the controller. Once the controller's powered up, we can turn on our scale. I see a scale. As you can see, as soon as the uh, controller detects a scale, it will activate relay zero. This is the relay here. And that will turn on or turn off whatever is attached to that relay. Currently, we have one of our little spotlights here attached. So it's turning on just to let uh, us know that it's seen the scale. It also played the audio file. We have a speaker attached here. You can, of course, customize that audio file to play whatever you want or to be non-existent if you don't want an audio announcement. If we turn the scale off, it will also let us know that. Scale went away. And the relay turns off. So let's turn it back on. Relay will turn on. We'll get the announcement that the controller has detected the scale. scale. And we can go ahead and start uh, placing weights on the scale. So we've already programmed the solution here. Again, we'll go over how you actually program in your solution weight in a little bit. You'll notice that there are four lights here, and those correspond to the four relays on the top of the controller. These are relays 0, 1, 2, and 3. So relay 0 is used to indicate whether or not a scale is sensed. Relay 1 is used to indicate whether a weight is detected that is too low beneath your threshold. Relay 2 is used to indicate if a weight is too high above your threshold. And relay 3 is our success relay. So if we were to place one of these items that doesn't weigh enough, that's below our target weight on the scale, it's going to play the corresponding sound file and activate Relay 1. Too low. And we can set how long that relay stays active for. Right now it's set for just a few seconds. Too low. And it will keep repeating. If we place objects that weigh too much that are above our threshold weight on the scale, it will activate Relay 2 and play a sound. Too high. And of course, if we place the correct objects on the scale, it will match the weight and play our success sound. Most commonly, you would have something like a magnetic lock wired to that output, but we have a light here just to indicate that we have success. Um, you can choose what happens with the puzzle now. Right now, we have it set so that the puzzle will actually shut off, uh, basically discontinue working once you've had a success. You, you can set it to continue operating, continue sensing weights, but for the most part, you'll probably be using it in this configuration where once the correct weight is entered, the prop basically shuts down and uh, the players move on to the next puzzle. All right, so let's head over to the computer. Uh, we're going to show you how to update files, uh, how to change files, and how to set the settings for this uh, prop here. As we head over to the computer, we just need to remember that the target weight that we want to be the solution to this puzzle is 6.6. Okay, so here we are over at the PC. Um, we have our USB thumb drive inserted into our USB input on the PC. We're gonna go down to File Explorer here and click that. And we're gonna navigate to where the thumb drive is right here and we're gonna open it up. Now on our thumb drive, we have versions of the sounds which the controller plays during different states of the puzzle already. So we can kind of discuss those later. The first thing that we need to do is create a new settings file in order to create the settings that we want to be loaded into the controller. So to do that, we're gonna open a program like Notepad, which I have here. This is just a simple text program. And I'm gonna paste in some information that can be found in the manual. We'll also have a sample file online that you can find this info in. So I'm just gonna paste this in. All right, and this gives us all the settings that we can change uh, to control how the puzzle functions. So you'll see the first one here, weight tolerance. We currently have that set to five. What that means is that any weight that is less than or greater than our target weight by five units will trigger as a success. So we currently have our success weight set to 66. That's what we wanted as we discussed earlier. Default is 64, so we just changed that to 66. Uh, our tolerance is set to five, so that means any weight as low as 61 and as high as 71 is gonna trigger a success on this prop. All right, next we have our too low relay on time. That is the time that the relay, which indicates a weight that is too low, that is a weight that is uh, um, 
lower than our success weight, less our weight tolerance is detected. And that relay will currently stay on for two seconds. The too high relay on time, same thing, but just for a weight that is higher than our success weight plus our tolerance is also set to two seconds. And our success relay on time is set to 15 seconds. That's how long the relay will activate when a success weight is detected. So that's a weight that is equal to our success weight or uh, greater than or less than uh, in accordance to our weight tolerance. So the last option here is called power down after success. And we have two options. We can either have uh, the digit one or zero. Uh, one means that the puzzle will actually shut down after a success is detected. So it'll basically stop working. That's the mode that we're going to be using. Uh, zero will allow the puzzle to continue operating, continue detecting lower, higher, and successful weights over and over again. Um, so you could sort of use that as a soft reset if you wanted to. You could have your success time just be however long it's needed for the players to figure out what's hidden in the lock that opens, and then it will reset and be ready to go for the next group. All right, so once we have all our information set as we would like it, we can just save this file. We're going to go here to File, and we're going to click Save As. All right, so we just need to rename this. We're going to name it uh, all lowercase settings. And where it says .txt here, we're going to go over, we're going to delete that, or we're going to change it to .ini. And we're just going to go ahead and save. It should pop up in a second here, and there we go. So that is our new settings.ini file. We can go ahead and close this now. Now we can navigate back to our USB stick, and we can copy our settings.ini onto the USB stick. Now when we uh, eject this USB stick and then bring it over to the controller and power up the controller with the USB stick inserted, it's going to look for this settings.ini file, and it's going to read those new settings into the controller. As I mentioned earlier, uh, you can see that we have a number of sounds here. And the other thing that the controller will do when a new USB stick is detected at boot, it will look through and it will copy over any of these MP3 files that it finds, as long as they're named properly. So we have connect.mp3, that's what plays when a scale is detected. Disconnect.mp3, that's what uh, it plays when a scale is disconnected. Uh, success.mp3 is what it plays when a proper weight is detected. And then you have the too high and too low sounds, which play if there is either a weight that is too low or too high. All right, so let's say we want to change one of these. Our current success sound is sort of like a trumpet effect, but let's say we wanted it to be a series of dings. I have this sound here called three dings. And let's say we want to replace the default sound with that one. All we do is we take this sound file, click here so we can change the name, and just type success and click away. Now we've changed the name of this file to all lowercase success.mp3. So just as long as you know that your uh, file is named exactly what the names are here, uh, you can take that, you can copy it over and just click to replace the file in the destination. It will write that new file over the current one. And when we insert this USB stick and boot the controller, it's going to take that new success.mp3 and write over the current one that's on the unit. All right, so with all that done, we can go ahead and right click and eject our USB drive and remove it from the PC, go over to the controller and test it out. All right, so now with our USB drive all set up, we can go ahead and bring it over here to the controller for the prop and insert it. We can then power up the prop and it's gonna play an audio message letting us know that it's copying USB files and when that's complete, Relay Zero will flash five times. Copying file from USB. 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 Copy complete. Remove USB stick and restart. All right, so we can now remove the USB drive and restart the puzzle. We can activate our scale. I see a scale. And the prop is now running using the new configurations and audio files that came off of the USB drive. So we can test it again as we did before. Uh, again, if there's a weight that's too low, it will tell us. Too low. If it senses a weight that's too high, it will notify us of that as well. Too high. And if it senses a correct weight, it's going to play our new success audio file and activate the success relay for 15 seconds. All 
All right, you heard our ding audio file there. Now this will activate this relay for 15 seconds and then because of that last line parameter that we set, it's gonna shut the prop down so that the prop has essentially been solved and is now inactive. All right, so that is a quick view of our weight detecting prop for escape rooms. If you have any questions, of course, you can leave a comment on this video or send us an email at sales at fryprops.com. Thanks.